hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Third and final video of the day. Helmets of the month for January. And a big response this month, as big as September's all but two. So, it's a good one. Uh, you'd be surprised that to, for me to tell you straight away who, who's number one, but I'm not gonna, you'll have to wait. But, uh, when I fiddle about with my shoes. Right, straight in. <coughs> no messing about. You're gonna, uh, you're gonna like this one. Number 15. He's usually number one, but he seems to have disappeared off at face of earth, doesn't he? But on the next pay-per-view show, I can assure you, you'll see him. Anthony Bellew, aka Helmet of the Year. He's number 15, it's uh, usually number one or number two is uh, down at number 15. So, maybe because he's not in our lives anymore and maybe we miss him. Maybe, maybe, maybe we miss Anthony. Anthony, we miss you. Come back and be a helmet, please. We want you back in in top two at least, or top three, but uh, number 14, well we know why this guy's number 14 don't we, Spencer Oliver, have you heard his pound for pound podcast, have you heard, have you heard that, do you know all it is that, it's matchroom propaganda, like Hatman Strikes Back YouTube and Sporting Icons YouTube they are all on the Matchroom Gravy Train at some point perks flying all over the place trust me we know what's going on the hardcore fans know the ones who want to criticise and say no we don't know well you don't want to you don't want to get on the Porky Express train, do you? But I can assure you, that podcast is shocking. People are getting paid to go on that podcast. How's about that? Paid to go on it. What is all that about, eh? Paid to go on it. You've got Coogan Cassius on there, Mr. Impartial. Do you know what I mean? It's Carl Froch were on the other day, he's been on a few times. He's not been on here, has he? I know why Carl won't come on here though, which does disappoint me a little bit. Does disappoint me. But he's uh, he's got a job at Sky Annie, so you know what can you do? But that podcast Spencer Oliver's in involved with, it's matrimonial propaganda. That's all it is. What they do all the couple of hours that are on it, they just rim everything matchroom. They talk about everything, all things matchroom. Well, there you go. So Spencer Oliver's number 14. Number 13, Johnny Nelson. What, what can we say about this man, Johnny the Entertainer Nelson? The original piggybacker, the original networker in boxing, as you've just heard on the Glim Roads interview. Bomber Graham were riding high back in the day. Johnny Nelson palled him up straight away. Before he even turned pro, he palled Bomber Graham up. And we know why, don't we? He'd have been giving it that brother, brother brother from another mother, all that talk that he comes out with. I've been at shows with Johnny and he's giving it high fives, you're my brother from another mother, and all that crap that he talks. Biggest networker in boxing. Now, Johnny Nelson, number 13. Need I say more? The guy was saying that Tackham were like Holyfield. And he could see how Conor McGregor beat Mayweather because he were fitter. 
God. And now Callum Johnson beats Peturbia. God. Need I say more? I, I can't go on anymore about him. The man is pure helmet. He should be number one every week or thereabouts. Number 12, Coogan Cassius, Mr. Impartial. What can I say? He's not asking proper questions, is he? Why ain't he asking Eddie Earn about how 500 tickets appear daily on StubHub for the Joshua Fies? Why isn't anybody asking them questions? Why isn't Rob Tebbert? Why isn't Michelle Phelps? Why aren't these people asking proper proper questions? Rob Tebbert has got a reputation of somebody who, who, who asks proper questions, but when have they asked proper questions? When are these people asking the real questions? We don't want to pussyfoot around it, just ask them point blank. Ask Frank Warren, Frank, you're dead against Stubbub, but Stubbub was selling tickets for Joshua, for sorry, Stubbub was selling tickets on a Frank Warren show for Wilder Fury. Stubbub. Frank Warren had MPs asking questions in the House of Commons about Stubble because he wanted to stick up for the fans, for the fans. But yet soon as Stubble come running, they were begging balls out. Please sir, more, more. Like Oliver Twist, what's all that about? Hey, Frank, the contradiction Old fish eyes, Warren. But that's Coogan. Anyway, num num number 11. So that's Coogan at number 12. Number 11, Al Heyman, aka Man of Mystery. He's like Charlie out Charlie's Angels. You know, him who's, him who you just see front back like that. If I started doing this, this channel front back like that, and nobody got to know me, what would you think? I mean, we all want to see Al Heyman. I want to see Al Heyman do an interview. I don't want to hear about all this Mr. Big, James, James, James Bond carry on and all that crap. I want to see you come out and tell us what your plans are and what your vision is. I want to see you come out and do an Eddie Earn and give us a load of knackers, utter knackers. That's what I want to see. I want to see you come out and tell us your vision for PBC and ITV and all that. And I want to see you come out and explain to us why James DeGale, a shot fighter, against Christopher Eubank, a British level middleweight, fighting at super middleweight, but on pay-per-view. I want people to ask questions to, to you. And if they can't ask questions to you, I wanted to ask them questions for your flunkies, Sam Watson, or Frankenstein's monster, Richard Poxon. I want, I want to see people asking questions why this is pay-per-view. And I don't want to hear, well, it's, uh, everything's pay-per-view now. And I don't want to hear that. I want to know how James DeGale, who ain't got a world title, and he's shot to bits, against a British level middleweight, fighting at super middle, against a British level middleweight. I wanna know how you see that as pay-per-view. And what, what, what's this pony, pony undercard you're giving us for this next month? I want questions like that asked for you, to ask to you. From your Rob Tebberts and your Michelle Phelpses. I don't wanna see them rimming you, patting you on back, and going for views and going around all gyms and buttering everybody up. The same certain people. You see how this works, right? I've just had Glyn Rhodes on here. Glyn doesn't do a lot of views. Because he's old school, isn't he? He doesn't put his scent out there. Robert McCracken wouldn't do a lot of views. These people are not social media people. These media outlets that are out there, your boxing socials, your IFL, behind the gloves, sporting icons, people like that. What they do, they only interview people that do numbers because they get money from it. I know what money, right, gets banded about for certain ads. I know what the average is. So I know, I can understand how 
these people don't want to waste fifty pound or hundred pound in expenses going to interview somebody that ain't going to do numbers. I understand that, but I think you've got to get a balance. Now, there's not been a lot on this month, so you've had IFL have just done, done, done loads of interviews the other day, and they're not hitting numbers. Either they're doing numbers like what I do after two days. But every now and then they'll throw a Dillian White in or a Frank Warren or, you know, you know what I mean? People like that, they'll throw them into the mix to get the numbers up, but there's, there's about ten people that they all want to interview. We know who they are, don't we? Eddie Frank, Joshua Wilder, Fury, Billy Joe, Dillian White, people like that, you know, maybe, you know, a couple of others. Adam aka Mr Bean Smith but I want to see them interview somebody else other than these 10 Dave Allen's in that mix he does good numbers doesn't he but Dave Allen won't do interviews with people who don't do numbers he won't come on my channel Dave Allen he did a year ago last February I had him on but he won't now because he's in mix at Sky in it now when it looked that Sky didn't want him last year me and Dennis, me and Dennis couldn't get rid of him up at Sheffield we had him out for a meal with us and he would have won a Sheedy's fights, weigh in and stuff like that. There's no wrong with that, but you know, it, you've got to play the game with your people who put you there. Dave Allen turned pro with Dennis, so maybe Dave should start doing interviews with people that don't do a lot of numbers. Not like my channel, we're alright. We're not chasing numbers. But you've got to get a balance. I just don't want to see Dave Allen and IFL and Boxing Social. I want to see him spread the love. I want to see him become a man of the people. Because he's not won a belt yet, David, has he? But I think he knocks Lucas Brown out. But uh, that's Al Eamon, number 11. We're a bit of a rant there, aren't we? We're up to the top 10 now. Let's have a look. 50, you've got 15 minutes? 13 minutes to do up top 10. Easy. And I'm off for a game of snooker. Right, top 10. Tyson Fury. Uh, voted number 10, I don't know why. Uh, he's just put performance in of his life. All the emails came in in the last you know, 24 hours. Simple reason that there's a, there's a tweet going out. There's a tweet out there that... <laughs> oh. There's a tweet out there that Tyson's supposed to have uh, put a tweet out to Gemma Collins after she tagged him in on something. She's a. Uh, Gemma Collins is one of them that puts things out, doesn't she? To get a reaction and does things for PR, doesn't she? And I think she's tagged Tyson in, and some of these some people have emailed me in saying that Tyson's tweeted something to her and stuff like that, so. No worries, Glenn. Anytime, mate. Anytime. Cheers, pal. Nice text up the nose. So that's probably why Tyson's been voting him. But I saw some pictures of him and he looks alright. He looks like he lost a lot of weight. He might have overdone it a bit. But good luck to Tyson Fury. I hope he gets to wild the rematch. But with all these dates that he's got for an evening with Tyson Fury booked, who's to say he's going to fight again? You never know, do you? You never know, right? Number nine, old fish eyes Frank Warren. Now, it appears to me that old fish eyes, he looks to me like he's struggling. Looks to me like he's struggling to uh, to get Tyson out there again. That's just how it looks to me. He's got one fight left, Danny, on his deal, or has he? Is it free with a rolling contract for one year? You don't know, do you? As the as the love as the love turned to uh, as 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 it as it gone sour. Who knows? We don't know, do we? But Frank's in the mix. Number nine helmet of the month. Spencer Fearns number eight, A.K.A. the Knowledge. Why do they call him the Knowledge? Why? Why is he having all these? Why, why is he known as the knowledge? I saw him run into it with Carl Froch where they asked him who Carl fought twice. Who was the only person he fought twice? Couldn't even tell you. 
And then did they ask him, we're on toe to toe, who we beat, who were a, for, who were a former Olympic bronze or something? Or, couldn't even answer that with Robin Reed, won it? He got two out of five right, didn't he? The knowledge. Spencer Fearon, you are a helmet. I don't like you, alright? From me to you, I don't like you. Number seven. And I like this kid here, but he gets loads of stick. Some of the emails I, I get regarding this guy, I don't know, but uh, uh, number seven is Anthony Fowler. So, Anthony Fowler. Rico, let me phone you, not way on, because I'm just filming, mate. Cheers. Anthony Fowler's number seven, right. Anthony Fowler, what has he had? Nine or ten fights? Eight, nine, ten fights? Latvian bin men. All of a sudden, he's going on about, I want to sky, I want to be headlining on Sky now against Cheeseman or the other guy, uh, Fitzgerald, is it? Uh, what, what, him, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, who have you beat to be shouting and bawling like that about headlining on Sky? I, I don't see, I don't get where you're coming from. I don't get where you're coming from, Anthony Fowler. I don't know, I just don't get it. You're managed by Tony Bellew, you're trained by Penfold Dave Caldwell. So you've got the right people around you to be tapping into Eddie Earn, aren't you? But do you deserve to headline on a Saturday night after the nine Latvian bin men? Come on. Boatsy should be headlining before you. At least he won an Olympic medal, didn't he? Or well, he went to the Olympics. Number six, Jake the Helmet Wood. Is he? He's always, he's always there or thereabouts, isn't he, Jake Wood? Right. I used to think he was alright. I actually saw him at a couple of shows a few years ago, and uh, I don't know what to make of him. He's an actor, isn't he? He's an actor, but he does a podcast with Spencer Oliver. They've got sponsors coming out the back end of them, hanging out the back of them. And what 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 are they? What are they really? Are they going to have are they going to have some uh, rivals to match them on their pod? I don't know. Have they had Frank Warren on yet? I don't know, but uh, it looks to me like the rubbing fans up the rubbing fans up wrong way. Uh, Jake Wood, so Jake Wood, you are a helmet, you're number six. We're down to the top five now, boys and girls. All you hard calls out there. Number five. Big baby Miller. Right, this is what this is what I wanna I want I wanna ask you, right? Big baby Miller, right, is in the mix to fight Big Dosser Femi. So you've got Big Baby Miller, Big Dosser Femi. Big Baby Miller's best win is a 40 odd year old Thomas Adamek, a career light heavyweight. And you've got Big Dosser Femi, best win is a guy in his 69th fight, age 41 plus. They could fight in America. But if Joshua can fight anybody at Wembley Stadium, anybody he wants and sell out, why doesn't Eddie Hearn still give him that date? And fly Miller over. Why don't he do that? I don't want to hear about this American debut. Because only a few months ago Joshua was saying the UK is where it's at. The UK is where it's at. Let me tell you this. Tyson Fury's now took over the UK market. They're not queuing up now for them evening with Anthony Joshua's, are they? They're all queuing up for evening with Tyson Fury's. It's turned on its head, hasn't it? Tan just turned a little bit. It's careered off at Bankins and turned full circle. It's turned that much, they didn't put Miller on at Wembley. If it hasn't, Eddie Hearn said, oh, we could sell out Coogan Cassius against Joshua at Wembley. Bring Miller over then and put Miller on against Big Doss of Femi. Put Miller on against Femi at Wembley. In two months' time, put Miller on. Hey, what we got here? 29, 30, 60, in, 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 in 10 week, 10 week, put Miller on in 10 week against Joshua at Wembley and front it out Eddie, front it out, come on, front it out because you will, it will be one fight too many, 
just like you're already two fights too many with Takam and the, the Povetkin. Takam, 37, Povetkin in his 40th year. Two fights, too many. Miller would be an overkill of biblical proportion, proportions. Biblical, let me tell you, biblical. It's got to be Dillian White, hasn't it? Dillian White's not daft, though, is he? He's holding out for a proper payday. Or oh, they're going to lose the date. Now, they're accountants. They will risk that date. It'll be a stack card. Stack card, that's what it'll be. Number four. Anthony Joshua, number four. I don't even need to go down there, that route for Anthony Joshua, does he? The guy is a complete helmet. He should be number one, but he's number four. I think we've just said enough about him, haven't we? I don't even want to talk about him. The big dosser. Number three. Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn, number three. What can we say about Eddie Hearn that's not all been said? Hair plugs, Eddie Hearn. The man with the air transplant. Eddie Hearn is a helmet. Now, you know that, and I know that. And even the casuals know it, but they just want to go to an event, don't they? They don't want to go to watch a boxing match. They don't even know who's fighting half of them. They just want to go to an event. And they'll get everybody to mingle around, all the matchroom mob. Then they're not fighting, they'll all mingle and they'll do selfies. And they make you feel special about your sense and you'll, be, you'll get to meet the, ta the cast of Towie. Oh my God, I can't wait. Lovely jubbly and we're all on bubbly. Hey, Listen, do you think Eddie Hearn, do you think Eddie Hearn's bothered, right, about what people think about pay-per-view going up three quid or stub up, 500 tickets every day going on stub up. Who's supplying these tickets? Who? Do you think he's bothered? Is he bothered about what the hardcore fans think? Namely us lot. Is he bothered? He's not bothered one bit. One iota, he is not bothered. It's just how he is, isn't it? It's just his mentality, isn't it? He's just not bothered. But, uh, anyway, I don't want to talk about it no more. It gives me indigestion after I've had my tomato soup and my milkshake. Which brings us to number two. It's, uh, it's getting tight now for number two. Who can it be for number two? Who can it be? We just don't know, do we? Well, I do, because I've got it wrote down here. I've got all the votes in. And we're going to talk about these when I do my phone-in. Because we're doing phone-ins. We're going to film it and put it out in a two-hour special. We've got editing people who are going to edit it now into a two-hour special. We're going to do a phone-in. I'm going to build them up over one day or two days. And we're going to put them out in a two-hour special. Talking all things boxing. So, number two is Adam Smith aka the spin doctor aka Mr Bean aka Beanie aka the creepiest man in world sport not the creepiest man in boxing he is the creepiest man in world sport what sort of man comes up with an idea at Sky that people like him who are pundits need to mentor boxers who are in the GB team. What sort of man comes up with something like that and then decides that he wants to mentor he wants to mentor Savannah Marshall. What 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 a, what a creepy creepy man he is. Very very creepy. Why do these boxers who are in Olympic team and that need mentoring? They've got the best advice and people around them up at the ES that you could ever have. So why does Sky and all these ex-fighters and pundits need to start mentoring people who are in GB team? I don't get it. I think the guy's a complete and utter weirdo. And these interviews he's been doing lately about who, who Joshua's going to fight and how the, 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 the current market is and all that. Utter, utter baba. I don't want to hear it. You're creepy. You're a creepy, creepy man. Just tell us. 
just tell us where you buried the madam, please. And I also want to know it is this: Have you got Klitschko put down somewhere? Because nobody's seen him for a few weeks. Answers on a postcard. Postcard to Porky's Corner, South Yorkshire. <laughs> well, it's that time again, folks. It's time for number one. It's time for the number one helmet of the month. Now this person has never been number one before. He's never been number one. No. But he's been a complete helmet. And he's got such a following of haters, it's unbelievable. But the number one helmet of the month for January on Porky's Corner is... AB It's about problems AB about billions Oh the problem is it is some What a helmet did you hear that interview? What did he land about five punches around the summer if that? How on earth could he say that he beat Pacquiao? He lost every single round I had it you could give him one round just to just to just so he didn't get talked about by judges. He never won. I can't even give him that. You could give him a share of one round. It was a shellacking. He got whooped. He got Pacquiao whooped him like he was his daddy. Broner got whooped. I mean, that was bad. That in my opinion. But what can you do? It's uh, it's just how boxing goes, isn't it? But people are going to pay to see him. He's Al Heyman's boy, isn't he? But it's one of them things, isn't it? It's just one of them things. But Adrian Broner, you are Porky's Corner Helmet of the Month for January 2019. Pound for pound Helmet of the Month. Congratulations. Shout out to my pal Frank at Berry, Rico at London. Shout out to Glyn Rhodes for coming on earlier. Shout out to Ali at Churchill's Taylors. Shout out to Justin at the Tea Leaf Company in Brighton. And a shout out to Kay Official for my new coat in NJ's coat. Thank you very much. That's three videos done for today. I'm now going to go home and then go for a game of snooker all being well. I've been up all night. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing because it's a fantastic sport. Alright. Peace out. Right, so we'll turn off now. Right? Turn up. I'm just finished now.